Cheerio. Uh, so today, driving around my mail truck, pretty good day on the mail route. Uh, did start the day running out of gas, but I was able to coast into the post office. It all worked out okay. But uh, I decided to listen to the Colorado, or the Wisconsin Confession. And in the last video, so these are just some of my thoughts on that. In the last video, I talked about how Shannon told her, her Facebook people that Nicole Atkinson had, was selling so much Thrive, she had quit her job. Okay, well, she hadn't because when the police wanted to speak to her, they wanted to interview her. She told them she had to work at 6 o'clock at this facility. Uh, but there's just another side note. So we, we know that she had a little girl. She was carrying her. We know she had the boy, Nick, I believe. And you realize that this event probably changed the trajectory of his life. I mean, he may end up being a hot rod defense attorney or a great cop. Who knows? But this probably did change his life and for the better. Uh, but so she obviously wanted to be home with her child during the day. So she worked at nights at the nursing home. And I just found that interesting. But uh, so Chris is talking about things and they're talking about Nutgate. And the, they also they bring up the birthday party that Bella couldn't have. Bella wasn't allowed to have the cake because Celeste wasn't allowed to have the cake. OK, well, to me, that's a terrible life lesson. You can't have something because someone you know and maybe someone you're related to. But uh, your sister can't have it. Okay, so what happens if uh, Celeste ends up being allergic to chlorine? Are you not going to let Bella ever go to the pool again? No, this, that's just, it's a life lesson that, hey, man, it stinks. Celeste can't have that. Uh, it's, it's, it's a life lesson. <laughs> uh, but then think about this. Shannon posted that fiasco online. She didn't post the truth either. The grandmother... Chris's mother did not give this pistachio ice cream. The 13-year-old girl went and scooped it herself. You know, I guess Shannon wasn't clear enough with the 13-year-old about this intense allergy threat. But a couple of things. Notice that when Shannon posted about not getting online, she wrote, my 2.5-year-old is severely allergic. Well, didn't you celebrate her third birthday while you were there? So it... It makes it look better that you have a two and a half year old who can't is in such who is such poorly behaved that she may actually reach into another person's food into their area and grab something and eat it. A three year old. This child turned three and she would do that. And that's something a top not a top an infant does. I mean it's embarrassing, but that's why Shannon wrote in her post that Cece, or my two and a half year old, because it makes it look a little bit better. At least the kid's only two and a half and she's not three. Uh, but then you're posting online something that someone in your family. Okay, so Shannon was hurt by that. I, I get that. I, I, she, oh, she exaggerated. I believe she was looking for anything she could. She separated the man from his family by getting him to Colorado. She was an excellent gaslighter. We already know she was able to gaslight him into the carpal tunnel. And the reason I say that is I had carpal tunnel and I had to have surgery on both of my hands. It's not something that just goes away or, or fixes itself. And so, you know, I, I think she talked him into that and that's easy to do. He gets home at night and he, he's doing something. He goes, oh, and she, whoa, she can just start sticking on that and just weeks and weeks of saying that and oh my goodness his hands are really starting to hurt and so they yes let's go work in the oil fields even though my dream is being a mechanic now honestly between you and me i believe anna darko was probably a, a better career step for him as well you get to a plateau in the auto industry i told you this my first husband was a mechanic he was you know the master mechanic had all the certifications and stuff but you just get to a certain point where you can only turn so many hours in a paycheck and you get paid by the job. So it, it is all full commission. It's a little bit more pressure. And I'm going to say you probably had a little bit better benefits at Anadarko versus, hang on a second. Oh, goodness. Got me a cramp. At uh, Anadarko, excuse me, versus Longmont Ford. But 
uh, Chris bragged. So, what's his name? FBI guy. Grant. Grant. Grant's talking about Shannon's personality. And he's like, that's probably why she was so good at Thrive. Chris says, yeah. And, and he says, she made almost as much money as I did. And they didn't take taxes out. She got paid every Tuesday. Okay, so what's the chance, do you think, that Shannon was putting 25 or 30% of money of that money aside for taxes? Absolutely zero. Remember, she's getting the Whoops t-shirts and getting the trailer trash fingernails uh, and not paying the mortgage for the last three months. Um, in September, she was going to have to start broadcasting from a two-bedroom apartment if they could get approved for one in their credit. What apartment complex is going to give someone who's just been evicted another lease? That's what I'm saying. She was, what was she going to do? How was she going to broadcast this perfect life? You know, in the documentary, which is a different series I'm doing, her teacher, who is her, still her friend or something, talks about, well, she was probably hanging on to the marriage uh, to help her brand. Well, absolutely. Good God. It's this perfect life. And... And Thrive works so well. Ignore the fact that Chris is running seven miles a day and he's eating healthier than any freaking other person on the planet. It's not has nothing to do with that. It's the patches and the shakes. So, uh, Grant's asking about how they, they get along. And, and Chris admits that he pretty much let her do anything she wants. He said, well, that was what she didn't like about her first husband. He told her no. Did he tell her, no, honey, we have to pay the rent before you can get your nails done? <laughs> or, or, honey, do you really need an Apple Watch when your phone never, ever leaves your side? No. And let me say, ask something. He had been in the military, and now he was in school to be a, an attorney. So he had been in the military, which means the military is paying his schooling. So they're not going into high, massive debt for that. I would think... She almost, she's got her hooks in somebody who's going to have earning potential. Not unless that he was going to work for a nonprofit forever. Maybe, but still. And then Chris talks about how he's upset that, you know, why did she have to go to North Carolina for five weeks? Why couldn't we have all just gone for one week? Well, because you had nobody to take care of the children. No one to parent the children for five weeks besides Shannon. Because, Chris, you have to work. She doesn't want to do that. She doesn't want to have to actually interact and deal with her children all that time during the day. She posted multiple examples of times where it was just her and the children. And she's always calling them names and saying how hectic life is. What the fuck? They're your kids. Uh, this is totally something separate. But when somebody will say, oh, their, their husband's name is Dan. Dan's going to babysit tonight. No, Dan isn't. Dan's going to parent tonight. You're not babysitting your own ki kids or your, your parenting. Good God. But um, she, she didn't want to be with those kids. Think about it. They got up in the morning. She got them off to school, daycare. And then Chris picked them up around 4.30. So she got them off by... Chris mentioned that there's a special class that's from 6.30 to 7.30 where they put all the age groups in one room because all the teachers aren't there yet, right? Uh, none of my kids ever went to daycare, so I, I don't really know a lot about daycare. Well, I mean, I guess a stepkid did, but I still don't have a lot of experience. But, which means there were times those kids were there before 7.30. Uh, Chris picked them up around 4.30, and then we know at 6.30, they went upstairs to get drugged up, Tylenol and Benadryl, and into their rooms with those room-darkening curtains to sleep until 5.30 or 6 the next morning. The kids couldn't open the garage door because that would wake them up. And that's how, you know, Nate, the neighbor, knew something was wrong. I think that a couple of her friends even said, whoa, Chris pulled in the garage, in the driveway. Can't pull in the driveway because there'd be oil in the driveway. But that garage door would wake the kids up. Don't raise your kids to where they're that delicate of sleepers. Goodness. If I go to a house and it's got the sign, don't ring the doorbell, baby's sleeping. I want to like accidentally fall and hit the doorbell. Good God. Don't have your kids. You made your kids that delicate of sleepers. You did that to your kids. And don't ever get your kids where you have to put them in the car to drive around to put them to sleep. 
Bad, 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 bad. Okay, I'm going to shut this down. If you're still watching, thank you very much. Wow. Uh, please hit like. Please hit subscribe. Share this. Whatever. Get the word out. Take care. Have a wonderful day. God bless America.